Hello and welcome back to SSC Masters. This video will be very helpful for you because in this video we will summarize the first three chapters of F9 or financial management. Let's start with the sources of finance. We have two major sources of finance. First is debt and the second is equity. And the main source of getting debt is bank while the main source of getting equity is shareholders of the company who invest into the company for the sake of returns fine okay so these shareholders cannot involve into the day-to-day -day management of the company that's why they appoint directors of the company so we can say that it is the primary duty of directors to act in the best interest of shareholders and to increase their wealth and profits, right? But let's say if at any point the directors try to increase their own remuneration or bonuses at the cost of shareholders return, then the conflict of interest may arise. Okay. Now to solve conflict of interest, we have several solutions such as linking the directors remuneration with the minimum profits of the company or by giving them some revenue targets or by offering them share option plans so it is the theoretic part which we had already covered in detail in our previous lectures fine now these shareholders who have appointed the directors may want to evaluate their performance for example either they have performed well or not now to evaluate the performance we have two approaches first is profit maximization which is based on profits of the company it is not a good approach and we have already discussed the number of reasons for which we are saying that it is not a good approach while the other approach is wealth maximization which is based on real cash flows of the company and it is a better approach now these cash flows can be even or uneven by even we mean the expected cash flow will remain same constant for the next number of years while by uneven we mean these cash flows can be different from year to year okay even the wealth maximization concept will be useless without discounting these cash flows by discounting we mean we want to take the present value of our future cash flows on the other hand we have compounding which is totally different than discounting in compounding we know what is our present value or current value but we want to predict its future value okay we have also learned it by solving number of questions now there is no much detail relevant to compounding but we have some further details relevant to discounting in discounting we studied some investment appraisal techniques in which first of all we studied some basic investment appraisal techniques which were based on undiscounted cash flows and in the basic investment appraisal techniques first of all we studied ROCE or return on capital employed which is also known as ARR or accounting rate of return secondly we studied payback period in the basic investment appraisal techniques in ROCE we have two approaches to solve the question the first approach is initial capital method and we will always use this method or we will always use this approach to solve any question in the exam related to ROCE or ARR until the examiner asks you otherwise okay so the other approach is average capital method which can be asked by the examiner specifically in the exam then we studied some advanced investment appraisal techniques which is based on discounted cash flows and till now we have covered NPV in the advanced investment appraisal techniques. Well, we have already talked about compounding and discounting. Let's have a quick review. 
in compounding here we want to predict the future value of today's amount for example what will be the value of today's amount after several years while in discounting we know that what are our expected future cash flows so here we want to estimate the today's value of investment okay based on its expected future cash flows now if we talk about annuities and perpetuities the only difference between annuity and perpetuity is the ending period for example in annuities we know that we have some specific or limited number of years while in perpetuity we don't know that for how long we are expecting to receive the cash flows or we are expecting the cash flows will be for unforeseeable future okay so it is the only difference between annuity and perpetuity everything else is same between both of them and both of them have even cash flows or constant cash flows for rest of their life okay Okay, so while we were studying annuities in our regular classes, we studied some basic annuities and advanced annuities. First of all, let's make it clear that why we are using annuities and perpetuities. As we know, in both of these cases, for example, in annuities and perpetuities, we have even cash flows for the rest of their life. Okay, so we can speed up the process of calculation using annuities and perpetuities instead of taking each year's value and then multiplying it with their relevant discounting factor fine now let's understand the basic annuities with an example let's say we are expecting to receive 100 usd each year for the next five years first of all please note down this point that here we have limited number of years in the case of annuities which will not be the case in perpetuities and it is starting at year one it is important to note that either it is starting in year one or in year zero because in both cases the treatment will be a bit different and let's assume here we have the discount rate of three percent now to solve this example we will simply take 100 which we are expecting to receive per year and we will multiply this amount with the annuity factor of year 5 at 3%. Okay, let me explain you once again that how we will take this value. In the exam, we will be provided with the annuity factor table. Okay, and here we will have some percentages 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, and so on up to 20%. Fine. And here will be the number of years, for example, year 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So here we will look up for the value which is existing here, for example, at 3% and at year 5. Fine. Now we will use this value here. And we will multiply 100 with this value. And finally, we will have some answer now please note this important point in the exam we will be provided with the discounting factor table and annuity factor table and in both cases it will be only up to 20 percent so it is very important that you should know that how to calculate discounting factor or annuity factor using their respective formulas okay because if the examiner asks you for the annuity factor at 25 percent then it will be very difficult for you now if we talk about the advanced annuities then it is perfectly same as basic annuities the only difference is how to include the value of year zero into the calculation okay now here because the cash flows are starting at year zero so our year one will be year zero okay and our year five will be year four so we will take annuity factor of four years instead of five years okay because 
for the year 0 the discounting factor will always be equal to 1 so that's why we will ignore year 0 while we were taking NOT factor fine so in this case we will take NOT factor of 4 years fine so it will be the value existing here fine so here we will have our initial answer now we have to include the value of year 0 into it the first way or the first method to achieve is simply add up the year 0 value into this amount okay which is our method 2 and we will have our final answer otherwise we can add up 1 into this NOT factor for example let's say if we have the NOT factor of 3.25 then we can add 1 into it then it will be 4.25 okay now if we multiply it with 100 then we will have our final answer you can use any of this method and finally we have perpetuities for example we are expecting to receive cash flows for the infinite future which can be without growth or which can be with growth for example we are expecting an increment of 10 percent each year okay so let's say for example we are expecting to receive 100 usd each year for the infinite future then here we will write 100 and let's say if the discount rate is 3% then we will divide it by 0 0.03 okay and here we will have the initial answer now to add up the year 0 value we have two different ways as we seen earlier we can either add up the year 0 value directly into this amount okay we are adding it up and here we have the final answer otherwise we can use this formula now if we talk about with growth then both of them are same the only difference is we will less growth from the discount rate in this case and finally if we talk about the delayed annuities and perpetuities there is nothing new here but you will be told that cash flows will start from the let's say for example year 0 or year 5 to onwards we will take its annuity or perpetuity as we normally do but once we have that answer we will discount it for the initial first three or four years okay so that was the quick summary of our first three chapters of financial management i hope it will be helpful for you thank you very much